Um, we've got a couple of others. Let's run through what we've got to say. Okay, so I see the mission. Oh, was that the most salient? 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 Was that the so the case of the North West. Yes. Um, so we can't often the nature to use by and the score does to the point. You say the silver man is called the Palmer Walk. Concrete stars should be to the floor's ascending point. You should remain at the ascending point to the left to be occupied the road and then only the enter on supply much to the surprise and see if the so. He's not attempting to be the same by vehicle or to appear to do so by the bar marshal. You should have access to the kind of clear from Jim's vehicles. We've got um, two councillors in attendance, one online council, being councillor Benny. Um, one wanted to do the protocols and start every meeting. Please don't be a public meeting. Members of the public will be in attendance. The meeting will be called as the clerk can publish it online for public review and after the meeting. Otherwise, the taking of photographs, including screenshots, audio and video recordings are not permitted to join the meetings. For those councillors who are with us this morning online, can act and the cameras are reportable to enable you to join by video and mute the microphones when not speaking. Please not give into your items so unless anybody to do so. If you wish to speak at any point, please indicate the reason you hand in the chat or the chamber, and we'll bring you into the table to him. As with normal meetings, unless we use the meeting phones to switch to all the silent, only one person speaking at a time, the participants should not take the text. Thank you. And you'll see, you'll see Lee Robertson on the screen this morning as well, but at least take a look at the tumble. It's a whole recuperate from a, an incident with the energy office this morning you know, to assist. So, do you really wish you were doing this? Good to see you back here shortly. Um, apologies for this morning, but comes to the clocking. Nothing else indicating to me. Declaration of interest. Okay, okay. So, I'm actually a previous meeting. Um, held on first day 18th of May, we'll go through them from page to page, page to the helps you know, to you know, the following new papers. Pages, page five, six, seven, eight and nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, page thirteen. Yes, I know what I mean. Sorry? It's called twelve in the state from the end there. Or page thirteen. Page 14, page 15. Yes, there's a read. Yeah, thanks, Chair. I, I just want to, um, I believe the minutes are incorrect uh, for myself. It suggests that I, I left uh, during the first item, um, but I was actually there and, and supported the, the, the local police plan, and I didn't leave until uh, Amendment 2 um, on page 11 of the, I believe it was to do with the, 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 the bins and the changes to collections and the amount of bins. So I, I believe that that's in the paper saying that I left June 8 and 1, which is incorrect. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
such this paper is such on eighteenth of May twenty twenty three, the council approved approval of proposing the following changes to its waste and recycling collection policy to introduce a new green bin to households for the separate collection of paper cards and cardboard and for recycling for this bin to be entered at four weekly collections to retain the existing blue wheels bin for separate collection of metal cans, plastic bottles, hot spots and trays and cans for recycling and for the, this bin to be also entered four weekly. Sent to the existing green bin, the wheels bin for non-recyclable waste four weekly and for three weekly garden waste collections to remain on the planet. Our waste collection would also remain unwanted. The changes have been introduced to reduce carbon emissions by prompting behavioural change amongst residents, driving improvements in recycling performance and resulting in a reduction in non recyclable waste arising. At Burnley Council meeting, members recognised the importance of the communications and engagement with householders and asked that officers return to this meeting with a follow up reportable strategy. The communications and engagement plan is to be found in the APDC. We have one recommendation that the Council notes the communications and engagement plan in the APDC and all the communication and engagement activities and actions displayed within this report. Um, any questions on the part and I'm joined today by no wasting of that. Can I show it? I think it's always what I'm best to address any questions. Thanks, you have any questions, Councillor Brown? Thanks, Ian. Uh, just, just a, a small question, Ian. Um, seeing um, we're up to 50% of um, recycling, um, how, are we, how are we going to measure within that within six months or is it a year before we look at it again? Because be, that's quite low, and I would imagine if we've got, if we're doing all this and all the um, the stuff that's going out to, to everybody in the county, then um, a lot of people more should, should know, know it a lot easier and a lot quicker, and hopefully then the percentage will go higher. So I'm just looking for a reassurance as to how quickly um, we, can, we can look at that and see how it is going. Do you like me? The recycling performance, the recycling rate, will be calculated on a monthly ongoing basis. So hopefully you should see the impacts of changes very quickly. Uh, but it, it, it might be, uh, there, there will be some um, in making the new service state place. So maybe you know, the first quarter, something like that. So certainly the first six months, most certainly in the first year, we, we will be able to measure the, the true impacts of the changes. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Councillor Bill. Yeah, thanks for the beginning. Very quick question. On 5.1, you talk, you're talking about engagement and the, the previous areas. Um, I believe you said that we could now pop up sheets for the views in the end of the areas are not included in the others. I see that the uh, sort is not included, the market is not included, the is not included. So, as an engineer, is a, a pop up sheet for the gifts that come to you rather than. Yeah, with what was by the news cover, can I mean big events where there's a, a large focus of people and the population? Uh, in addition to this, we're also going to be doing stuff in the local supermarkets as well. So similar to what you suggested, the council there about kind of pop up still. And again, that's where we're, we're, we're getting advice from the waste fall in terms of food fall in the county. And that's that's where we can get a biggest representation. But the, these are the key the key events, but if members feel that there are other local areas where we could attend or different meetings that we're not aware of, officers are more than happy to arrange pop up sessions in those areas. You say, uh, you say it could be used in uh, supermarkets, and I remember we did talk about that in the paper. What kind of response do you have from supermarkets? We haven't actually made contact with supermarkets as yet. We'll be doing that shortly. Okay. There's a coin. There's a coin. Yeah. <laughs> very simple question. Uh, first of all, can I say it's a very well presented report? Uh, very clear. Not lots of it. Um, or in the. Well, 
The, the point about the yes, on page 19, four point three, you mentioned the three dollars per foot at 16 page 85 full of health obligation. Presumably that would be going to 25,000 households, is it? Uh, but that's the first half of the question. The second half of the question is uh, I wonder about the format of that because it's going to be a lot of money for a full colour in my publication times 25,000. They really want to extract maximum value from it. I would suggest uh, do you agree with me that perhaps we should major on the graphics rather than words, make the message simple and clear? Don't, don't drown people in the words because most of you will have up with this page out of the page words will be. You won't be a programmer. Yeah, so the first half of the, the question was the answer was yes. <laughs> the second one, um, you'll be happy to know that the, the comms is going out, it's actually over, it's like a form of a card now, and it's very visual. Um, that's the feedback we've got from Jay Weiss calling it quite descriptive about the comms and the way because it's been tried and tested with authorities and altered over the years. So, yeah, it's official that the, the, the clearly states in the community. The different bins when you'll be collected and what the new region standards is. We've got copies today, actually. I should have said, sorry, that we've got a table at the back, and then because of our modern mail code, we had a laser to review the copies that's going out in the different key, key messages. I think that the question related particularly to this is the page booklet, yeah. which is the intention um, to deliver one of those to every household in the county immediately prior to the within the fortnight uh, prior to the launch of the new service. Ian was referring then to the warm fly that would be going out to every household um, relatively shortly, telling them to uh, expect the delivery of the new grave in. But with both um, publications, they will be very visual, very colourful, um, and, and the book that they specifically referred to that, it will be an adaptation of a book that's already in use. Um, and we, we have looked at trying to reduce the page size, uh, page numbers, sorry, um, but it wasn't really practical. And the booklet, along with all the other materials that we produce, which are on the table there, have been very much worked to be in conjunction with Zero Waste Scotland, utilising their knowledge and experience from working with other authorities. And so they're right behind this, um, this method of communication, the, the, the booklet. And you, you would be surprised as well, but how uh, cost effective it is. It, it isn't as expensive as one might originally think. Okay, obvious question. How much of the cost? I don't have a precise figure at hand because we haven't got out to tender yet, but I think it's we've produced 5,000. Of the existing one some months ago, I should not the existing service. Fifteen hundred pounds, something like that. So you know, we, we utilize um, the existing framework contracts through um corporate communications and, and we do get a very good deal. And there's three types of bin sticker, for example, twenty-five thousand of each, so seventy-five thousand in total vinyl stickers. Um, in total, comes to about five and a half thousand pounds. So the, the costs are surprisingly um, low. My concerns are very good, thank you. Okay, is there any other questions? Yes. Okay, we'll ask Councillor Watson who is a paper. Thank you. Um, I'm happy to propose this paper. I think it's been really good to see this um, so we can actually see what's going um, out to people. Um, I'd like to thank um, the, the waste team who have been going out. They've been at uh, um, the Dollar Gala, um, they were mentioning, and they've been at Tom Cooper, and they've also been at Clamann. Um, a special thank you to Adam Salmon, who I think has been to all of them. Um, I spent a significant time with them at Telecutri and it was really good to actually go and speak to people and explain you know, what's happening. You see, so this is one of the, the flyers and it's really quite easy to kind of understand. It says how we're getting the new grave in. Uh, it'll be for paper, card and cardboard and it'll be collected every four weeks. And then on the back it tells about all the other grounds and what's going to be going on. So when you've been, I've been speaking to people about it, um, it's, it's been quite positive and there is concerns about where people 
or a big bin. Um, we actually have a few people who ask for smaller size bins um, because they deal with by themselves um, and also some people who have lots of recycling. So we also confirmed you, you can actually get a larger bin if you do have a lot of recycling. So I'm happy to have this going forward. Um, and as I said before, you know, the race team are there if anybody's got questions and also if you want to come to me as well. Um, I'm happy to take any questions from any constituents who's got any issues. So, uh, thank you. Yes, sir, that's a second. Thanks, Nina. Uh, yeah, I'm happy to second this. So, echoing Fiona's comments there, I think the waste team is a lot of credit for the way they've engaged. And um, I've personally been at a couple of the sessions that Alan has been at. One, uh, Cut down and Community Council, which was very good. Uh, but was, uh, the, the case across really well for it. Actually, at the end, there was very, very few questions um, came forward. And um, although the previous meeting of the Community Council, uh, myself and the other members that represent the ward, uh, had many, many questions posted us on it. So I think that, that, that just shows that the engagement with the team are doing, uh, getting out there and actually explaining the, the, the rationale for what's happening, how it's going to happen. What can be done to help them is, uh, is very important. So, yeah, I'm happy to second it. Thank you. Papers open up for debate. Any of us to debate? Oh, sorry, Councillor Lansing. That's all right. No, it's really just again, for what Councillor Lansing was just outlining there. I think community engagement in our rooms uh, and its officers, I suppose, as well, uh, more importantly, is, is critical. And, um, you know, it, it's certainly the, the amendment that was put in has been sort of rubber stamp, I think, and bringing forward a, an update that um, outlines exactly the community engagement that's been uh, delivered uh, really, really well, uh, and providing that sort of public reassurance, as Councillor Hansen's just kind of outlined clearly there. So that was exactly the reason why we wanted to just bring this forward, just to provide that extra clarity, just to provide that extra comfort. Um, Around, around this particular chamber, but more importantly, I think the wider public, I think it's clear exactly what we need to do. So, yeah, I'm just really echo the, uh, the sentiments there in terms of really, really pleased with the way it's, uh, it's gone and it's going to continue. Uh, so, just thanks uh, to the officers for, for working with us on that and engaging really, really well in the public. So, thanks. Okay, thank you. Any others? Councillor Tuck. Thanks, Chair. Um, I just want to say that this is a big change for the public and this has the main issues will arise as time goes on. I mean, it's, it's all well we need to have a, a strategy and a forward plan for this work, but things will arise that are maybe just a wee bit out of the ordinary and I hope that there will be some flexibility in it to take account of the individual circumstances. Thanks, Jane. Thank you. So, no other screens are launching, I'm sure you can sum up. So, the action point required from this paper is to promote the communication and engagement plans in the NMT and all the communication and engagement activities and actions described in the report that have been approved. Thank you. Item five. Um, Okay, we're going to have a housing operation to perform this update. Now, what we're going to do is the truth that I had been on the housing project on the 16th of February, which I've been working on proposals for housing. Bring it back today and sponsor it to the standing on the 17th of the 16th of the road, which we are aware of, and I need to be satisfied. Um, Paper uh, needs to be on the agenda to raise the whole and discussion boxes of this matter. I'm satisfied the circumstances have changed in a relevant way to justify the inclusion of the paper on the agenda this morning. As can be seen from the detailed paper, the work plus the way the discussion of the material added to the by our problems and challenges in tackling the void issues expressed by TF, but the hand back on a social housing provision as well as a loss of air needs to catch the food and all strengths would be. Um, as, required, as required, I understand the orders of grounds for my acceptance of the paper will be contained in the minutes of the issue. And that this is what yeah, I'm going to present the paper. Thanks, Stuart, and uh, good morning, Council. 
Yeah. Just like it's not again by uh, Franklin and J.G. and colleagues for engaging us uh, so well in this matter, we can uh, constructively uh, dialogue in relation to the situation that we face. Also, as you can see, the chair's highlighted there. I was asked uh, on my return to Houston to attend a performance meeting where we were now sitting down looking at the figures, uh, the situation sort of taking them attention that there was some work to be done in terms of our bike performance. And obviously, that's led the situation in terms of looking further in terms of homelessness and housing support, which the, the, the chair has laid out this morning. The, again, there's the facts of the next federation as well that we've, we've, we've uh, engaged with in terms of the paper and obviously the comments that we do within this report as well uh, this morning. We held a member's briefing yesterday in relation to this paper, and that again was uh, really good. We well, had some really good engagement with members yesterday in terms of the detail of this paper, some detailed challenging questions, uh, which we were able to provide much more detail in terms of some of the, the points that members were raising. And obviously, we were able at that stage to go in that way, uh, slightly more detail around some of the procurement approaches that we're going to take and some of the timelines that we're potentially looking at. So that, that was welcomed and thanks to members uh, for joining us at that stage uh, yesterday. Obviously the report uh, indicates the presentation in terms of where we are currently in terms of uh, three main areas of house operations in terms of the void performance, homelessness and housing support. And I think what really comes through when it came through yesterday's meeting is obviously the focus clearly has to be on the people who we are who have approached the council and need uh, for these services and obviously the reason why we are proposing them and, and we've taken forward this, this paper as quickly as the council as soon as this mark came forward is obviously to make sure that the people with the process for help are supported as much as possible. And that came with the area yesterday through the briefing. So thanks for that. Obviously, the paper has, has a number of recommendations which are, which are laid out in the paper. I'm not going to go through them in much detail, but they are there in front of you in terms of the request for additional finance, uh, one of which is supposed to be subsequently approved by the Chief Executive under the financial delegation and financial regulations. Uh, but happy to see this morning to take any further questions that may have for us. Thanks, Murray. Questions, Councillor Thank you. Can I just ask another question about it? It's on page 38, but there's, there's a number of reasons why they did for homelessness. One of which is asked to leave. Does that refer to an internal um, household decision where perhaps the husband or the wife is asked to leave, or does that mean asked to leave by the landlord? Okay. Ordinarily, it means that it's, it's generally a person who's living in accommodation with another person or another household without having a legal right to remain there. So it would be an adult child, for example, is the, the, the ordinary use of that. It is quite a wide term, but in terms of a relationship breakout, um, it's great. Normally, will be the case of the break in that manner. I was really right up to the last line. Um, <laughs> But it's, I thought you we were talking about this internal issue of the house, but after that, I come under the relationship breakdown, you know, and that's the normal reason you can ask to leave. So it's a sort of it's an internal household, you know, and that was supposed to a landlord saying, you know, why do you want to quit? Wouldn't be able to say, but I don't believe so anyway. That would be the normal usage of that, a particular term. In that case, uh, can I ask where, 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 where the statistics here that I mean, the vast majority of people who come and see me as a council that are claiming themselves in a homeless position are, are because the landlord has asked them to leave. And, and there, there are a number of things, obviously, we should be in the other end of So, where again, the table would that, would that come under? You want me to say the reasons? Be the last one, termination of tenancy, or how much it would be to do it, how we would do it, or how we that. I'm going to ask you a question, so I'm going to ask you a question, do you think that's fair? Because I don't know. I can't be. Because if that's the case, I'd probably say about 90% of it. And I would doubt that very much. So I think that's pretty strong. 
Um, but I'm just going to take attention every perhaps you could look at that just to see because that doesn't reflect my experience in terms of the, the reasons why people are presenting. Maybe there are other reasons why you've been allowed to ask them to leave, but that seems to be a kind of cover all the termination of tenancy. So maybe I'll ask you to look at that. Okay. Yeah, it's not totally black. Look at it. Now, that's a general question around this map as well. Now, that whilst you've been aware of this decision that's been before. The, the reason why I've asked that particular question and numbers were not seeking answer 25 because it's the balance of the overall figure is kind of low. Um, I've had an inquiry, as you know, and I'm not going to breach the confidentiality of that. Area. I'm sure the person would be happy for me to do that, but I'm not going to do that once. What I say to you is that you'll be aware that I've been approached by landlords who are, and I, I have raised this issue on more than one occasion by landlords who have been told by the tenant who have asked to leave. That the tenant has been advised by the mansion council to stay put until we get taken to court. Now, the reason why I'm asking this now is, is obviously in these circumstances that, that could be seen to be a reaction to the issue of blocking terms of the boys and the whole turnover of law because they're difficult in cases, but I'm not suggesting that's the answer, but that could be the reason behind it. Um, and the answer that I've been getting back is that that's not the case, but that's that's different from an answer to what previously when I raised this issue before. Um, I was told, yeah, we do do that because that's the right defence for me to, to say where we are. But there's a difference between being advised of your right and being advised to say. You know, I've raised this with you, you said you're satisfied, and I'm going to tell you just now I'm not, because I have at least five or six people who can do that. Now, it's really important in terms of your strategy moving forward, uh, and what you're going to do for the review. So, my question, to the point, my question is will you take this matter and review? Because I don't believe the response. I'm going to be quite blunt with you. I've had the officers telling me, acknowledging the direct opposite of what we've been telling me. They were saying yes to advising people. They've written to the point where I've had this instant inquiry and other people were coming in. They said, well, we didn't have just let them know that that's the right. But I'm still being, we're still getting people coming up with the tenant council telling me to stay. And the reason why I'm asking this, and probably we've already had this in the reviews, is because it causes severe disruption for landlords. Uh, the landlords then have to cut costs, they have to take people to court. It's unnecessary because they're providing the proper notice to quit, they're doing through all the proper process. Also, causes unnecessary, unnecessary suffering and delay for the person who's um, being asked to leave. So, you just be told you have to leave your house and then you can advise the state where you have to go to court. And, and I know that you've responded to this individually as well, it can incur costs for the person who resides there because if they're found to have actions to be a reasonable share of what costs against them, although I know that you've told me that you think that would be unlikely, nevertheless. It's still a risk for them. So my question is, will that whole issue itself, and I ask if that will be looked at in terms of the review as well, because I think it doesn't get the manager council in a particular good light. The short answer is yes. We have already engaged with our solicitor and we've met with the, the house and teams and gone through exactly what the responsibilities are and the distinction between a uh, house and options interview and the homeless application can be quite clear of that. We do not provide advice specifically what people should do. We make it clear what their options are and advise them to seek legal advice before they make a decision. Uh, and then we will be open to accepting any homeless application at any stage of the process. So people will not be turned away. And uh, but I think as I said in the response to yourself quite later, but uh, obviously we cannot rule out the possibility that uh, the rights to be made and the property will be taken into account. So, yes, it would be short sure. ones. Yeah, thank you, Councillor Ray. Yeah, thank you. Um, on the same page, it's, uh, it's clear that just on the on the uh, item 428, you refer to the discharge from prison. Um, so, to the case of not the statutory duty, they find the accommodation for persons not being liberated from prison and the death of pollutant before released by the prison social worker. One question. It is a process which we do uh, engage in our prison service, the justice service, and before uh, prisons are not liberated. Uh, before COVID, actually, we actually agreed to them some of the arrangements with some of the local prisons. We actually uh, to make sure that the pathway to the is is the seamless important for some of the for some people that say uh, sometimes you get short notice and short relief 
Friday night, usually time when some things get late past in the email to say that something's been liberated. So sometimes that pathway plan does does fail a bit. It's something we actively work on with the justice service. Okay. Uh, second question. Uh, Will this be a, a C3.22? Thank you. And will this be C.22 from the data centers? As you talked in the course of the event, you let me the team meeting. So, the first thing is that the data between the main numbers and the capital requirement. So, the raising material was. We don't see the point of the activity. So, in terms of obviously, that's the, the way through the members making the yesterday, uh, and they've had to be quite a large speed here. The how we've arrived at some of the figures in terms of the assumptions that we've made in terms of cost per activity. Obviously, properties vary uh, with funds, and they go out and analyze some of the properties already in terms of what works with the real wild. So there is some methodology in terms of some of the, the work that we've done in terms of figures. Obviously, I think Andy explained in terms of the average cost, it's still be how we've arrived at that. So there'll be winners and losers in terms of some of this, but obviously that is the, 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 the demand and the aspect that we've came for. And obviously that's the amount that we'll be engaged with in chapters. Obviously, uh, throughout the we've got the commitment in the paper in terms of the performance meetings going forward, which we spoke about yesterday, but obviously the first one really focused on boys in the ears. So obviously, as that situation develops, also we'll be coming back with a uh, through financial papers in terms of updates in terms of the spend, but also during those performance meetings, we'll be updating members in terms of how we're getting on with the, the approach and the process as well as the spend profile. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Yes, Thank you, Convener. Uh, in my, I thought I knew this was a good thing to tell that 8.25 and 3.26. This is an amazing journey which left me completely flummoxed. So, what that was all about. But, uh, I couldn't, couldn't understand the, the calculation how we got to um, the, the figure that you got there at the bottom, start with the top. I, I, I couldn't make it out. Where we were getting your, your body plan at 4.6 million from, then I couldn't get the numbers to string together. I found it very difficult to understand that whole section there. Could you just take in broad numbers, take me through the big figures of taking this that volume? Well, apologies if, if that's not clear enough. Um, it is important, I think, you cover up again yesterday in some detail in terms of. The movement, obviously, as the chair highlighted at the, the, the introduction, obviously, the paper was approved for the council, having a, a set amount in terms of what the expected outcome would be in terms of the house and revenue account, the final financial year end. Obviously, that financial year end position was proved to be much more positive in terms of later surplus and, and the, the reduction in expenditure, uh, which has meant that there's been more money available within our reserves. So even from the last month where the council was asked to approve the additional investment like within West Hall, the borrowing even from that stage has 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 been reduced in terms of our requirements. So in terms of the overall picture from what we were asked to borrow in terms of uh, the council, borrowing has uh, was reduced from period until February. I would obviously it's complicated to just perhaps stand up here and go through work for those figures, but obviously, if members are keen, obviously, Lindsay and myself, Craig Dixon, can spend some time and work their way through those in much more detail. And I feel that's what we want to do. Thanks, so that's more of a more or less to suggest that that's rather come up the works with a long, convoluted discussion. I think we'll get you off the line on that one. Okay, fine, thanks. Um, Page 139, page 111. I just wonder if you had anything what that, what that might be. It's the last sentence in page 111. I'm also planning for the progress housing bill, which is expected to include further additional obligations. Have you any indicators to what those further obligations might be? Well, so obviously, the briefings actually been held within the last week, and there's actually one actually this afternoon in the chat, Mr. Person was actually 
with a lot of the pros that are always actually looking at some of these obligations. And there's exactly those ones that were discussed in the members making yesterday explicit in relation to the there's going to be further expectation in terms of our prevention duties, uh, which is going to be not only based on from the local authorities, but much wider from public bodies in terms of if somebody approaches a although this came up as a surprise to us yesterday, in terms of somebody approached uh, another health kind of service provider, such as social work or whatever they need in need of, of assistance that they would be able to provide. Uh, assistance and support to that individual at that stage rather than necessarily having to come for advice and, and guidance from the council or the house to them. So, obviously, we've got some work to do in that obligation. We have uh, spoken to colleagues in the uh, Falkirk Council and Stirling Council about looking at sort of Fourth Valley approach potentially to this work because obviously some of our uh, wider agencies cross the boundaries in terms of health and social care, etc. So, a much wider Fourth Valley approach might be more suitable in relation to that. Okay, thanks. Um, I think I've missed my hand. The table of the claim is referring to the base 38. The figures of the right hand column end up to 593. Is that statement of the number of presentations, new presentations you get, you got in the last 12 months or 12 months covered by that statement? That's right, we get 600 folk. It comes to five and three, it perhaps should have equal five and five because that's the number I remember Alex said about the applications. Uh, so, uh, the question was, is that the number of applications you get? Right. Um, yeah, I'm not finished yet. One six. The last bullet. Um, so, yes, I thought there was a circular problem here uh, in that whole section of housing support. It seemed that if you, and the way I read it was if you cut, so if you don't have a person in charge taking responsibility, then you can't run the service. And if you can't run the service, you're not going to solve the problem of renting income, which could have paid for the job in the first place. Is there a sort of circular problem? But second part of the question would be, if you haven't recruited somebody to fill the post, could you not temporarily be assigned to the line manager of the chair? I think the simplest answer to that first question is essentially yes, and that's why that's why the, the situation is, is, is outlined in, in the report. In terms of the most of actually the the, uh, the relevant team leader for that area, and then obviously we can spend some time with the care inspector and looking at the specific guidelines in terms of the requirements. Unfortunately, as part of one of the main requirements of the care inspector, you have to have to be the resident as a care manager, you have to have spend some time actually of Worked on the front line in terms of the patient support role, which unfortunately neither Rose nor I have actually had the benefit from. So that's one of the challenges that we do think that there is those uh, requirements in terms of this. And that's why we've been doing it That's why we've had to do the engagement with the care inspector to be absolutely clear about who can perform the role. Over two five page forty one uh, funding for these two GFO will remain by the earmark bonus reserve. Now, if that's earmarked, that means that you're taking that money away from something else. For what is going to suffer? There is a we have got money which is uh, in earmarked within the financial of the year end accounts in which the bonus as we're seeking. Guidance and uh, council opinion in, in relation to the, uh, the, the, the surplus that have been generated in the last financial year. So that's what that has been earmarked for by the way the council opinion. Uh, that's what works in the main area of engagement with uh, solicitors in relation to the matter of the council of open The restate that, I mean, the money that's earmarked 
in the laws of the is, is earmarked for things that include the span of prayer leave rules. Ah, right. Thank you. That's fine. Thank you. Did you want to go right here? Yeah. I'm sorry because I'm more of this. See the table. I'm oh, sorry. We're all, we're all focusing very heavily on this table, Murray, but see the table at the bottom of page 38. Does that, does that, it's safe to see in the last year. Is, is that like the last 12 months or is that the financial year for the 2023? It should. So this is the table as well. It's not quite here yet. Yeah, it should be the last financial year. It should be the last, the last year, the last financial year. So that's a. Uh, Councillor Pony would say that it added up to 393, so Alex explained that it was 593, sorry. Councillor Pony would say, so Alex had indicated yesterday it was 595 focus applications we received last year, so. Yeah. Yeah. Also, 593 forward slash 5 presentations, then. It doesn't make it for us, sorry. Then, of those 593 or 595 presentations, are these the ones? I can see are these ones that have been accepted, or is that just the ones that I'm applying? These are the ones, these are the applications that you've dealt with, so they might not necessarily have uh, been. Yeah, so not, not all those will necessarily have been found to be the ones. So, for the purposes of the table and the context of the table, is a bit of pressure. Understand the suppression and the number of people present, but really what this paper is focusing on is about the pressure that's created by the number of people that have to be housed. And ask them to think of the number of people who have to be housed in that, in that financial year. Or was it the numbers at the time? Or the numbers that were accepted and then how many of those will be housed? I do not have a number of hand, but obviously it's so quite simple that we can indicate the total number of lives in the three, five, and one. And, and obviously, 60% of the lights last year, around 60% of the lights last year, went to almost half of it. I will well, provide that information too. Because that doesn't get, still as a new thing, I don't think a new thing could be sharp about that, that information. But that's, that's fine. If we get that information back, I think that would be really useful really use for people because it just gets you an idea that the profession itself is stronger, but it also gives you an idea of the being limp back to the director has in terms of almost and so on from the lights. The council's how many folk have the council elected in the last year? And is that figure included in now? So again, I don't have that information to hand, but again, that's council already will answer that question in relation to the, the void process yesterday, which we committed to look at in terms of the first performance meeting. So that's probably a question again. We can probably go into much more detail at the first performance meeting. So it relates to the question of council dealt with us yesterday about the sort of Difference between the buying voice will become available, whether it was amendments, evictions, etc. So, so we can certainly look to provide that detail with And that's about information provided to elected members as a response to the question, or rather, and without the reviews of like to know how many council elections, perhaps in order to provide that an illustration, it would be helpful to be provided the figure over the last three years. Um, and finally, my, my, my final question is. Um, when the council evicts, do we get then subsequent presentations? So what I'm saying is, do, do, do we are we partly responsible for generating homeless, applic homeless applications by virtue of our decision to evict? Yes, that is be me, because uh, obviously previously represented on the applications, so it's not necessarily the police or something that is that we will be sent for singles. Um, but of course, the legislation makes it quite clear we must accept an application of persons who choose to do so, even if they have been evicted by us in the first instance. No question. Final question has been a change in legislation. It's my understanding with regard to the unemployment uh, term and social behaviour, which allows us to take into account convictions to the criminal court uh, for non housing related issues. 
So Joe Boggs thinks that he can somebody in a Friday night that's 15 miles for his use or 5 miles for his use and gets evicted as a result of that. But he's an example of a kind of. I'd like to know how many cases we've done in that in 22, 23, because that has a direct impact on the, the homeless list. And just for the luxury of connected for council subsidiary while I'm asking that. We are interpreting legislation, changes in legislation in a certain way, and that's not changing our behaviours, and those behaviours are then contributing to the problem that we have. That's something that I think should be recognised and solved. And we might then want to reflect on our own behaviour in terms of what we're about control. So that's the my massive question to get that information. Finally, and that's just the same kind of point in the question. It's also been a change in legislation with regards to the, the right to notify um, for, for tenants to notify the council who's residing in a, in, in a home. If you didn't do that, and we know this, because I've had various arguments, we've about and changed priorities and I've lost them all. Um, so it can be a situation where the mother dies in the house, for instance, I'll give an example of that. The members are aware of this, the kind of things that go on. And then the children in that house are then evicted because they were never formally notified the council who were tenants. I rather, rather, you know my thoughts on this, a rather unusual practice, but that again also is directly contributing to a homeless problem because they effectively don't get anything to tell they want to go. And if they don't want to go, then they police to go with it. It's an inhumane process, I would suggest, but it's nevertheless the one we seek to adopt it. So I'd like to get figures back on that as well. And I'm sorry about the team of the council. But I think it's an important issue because all of us are getting this problem. And that's the reason I'm asking the question. Yeah, the obviously connected to any of those figures and speculating the long main members. Uh, it was the forms meeting that you have indicated the council. Obviously, the what. Uh, uh, example that you used obviously about the Scottish Government legislation that was brought in uh, directly uh, that we have to adhere to in terms of the last one and then the That's an important point because my understanding is that we're not obliged to implement it. It was up to the councils themselves and whether or not we wanted to implement that and we've chosen to do that. That was the advice I got back at the time. I just asked Robson if you can confirm that. Um, I suspect that homeless applications and uh, these decisions are the time under discretion of the office of making the decision. So I would imagine that there are legal obligations to be recognised to the legislation and apply it, but officers would be required to show some form of discretion and reach the determination. Okay, Thanks, Chair. Uh, just on a point that, that uh, Councillor Holden raised, I believe Alex said that there's currently 250 applications going through the system, homeless applications going through the system. So just about to find out how that would be. Okay. Um, my question is, to money will be maybe, if we do not agree this paper today, Monday, what impact would it be on uh, housing list, uh, homeless list, and uh, on ready place status? Um, should the, the states go continue? Thanks. You got it. You see it, folks. I think we find ourselves, along with the number of local authorities, uh, the chief executive has been involved with work with Solace and obviously a lab for them, but because we're we'll feeding into some of that work, where there is pressure and it's highly embedded into the rag of South Asia. It's part of one of the appendices that we've lost a number of tensions. I feel that a number of some pressure in terms of homelessness, and it's not all the tensions, most of the, the, the South Asia highlights that, but across the same point around the sort of central belt area, the uh, whole central region, Fife, I think last week's a feeling some of the pressure. So, yeah, you know, staff have got a very difficult job just now. Uh, some really tough decisions in terms of what worked and what they're focusing on. So, yeah, if, we, if the paper were approved today, as we've seen through the sort of void process and down the through group, is that people will continue to wait longer to be in house. And obviously, that's, some, that's not the best outcome for being modern families uh, to wait such a significant period of time for, for, to get the property, obviously. But, 
the, the reports that are in the rich those were some. Yeah. Um, I'm also got a list of the forthcoming meetings um, at the end of the report. Um, could you ensure that all members get an official invitation to those meetings? Um, and would encourage members to, if you can, possibly link in to them, because that, that's where the actions will be taken and the actions will forward and the outcomes of anything that's been um, suggested in the paper today. Thanks. Yeah, that month. Yeah, I also very asked Pedro to go and sort of see because I thought it would be best. It's obviously, I know that the members briefing yesterday, the team seemed to work well, but some, some of these issues are quite complex and detailed, and uh, actually, that's why we've looked to book the chambers out in terms of. Some of the discussion that actually could be a bit more real because some of the bit of face discussion would be slightly more possible in terms of a hybrid fashion. Obviously, we have well, we've made a lot of still a sort of hybrid option available. Obviously, I think it'd be pertinent to have obviously the the public actual meetings in person as well. Obviously, we'll be joined at those meetings with the uh, the trade union colleagues as well, and with the state part of their performance. And obviously, the commitment of the trade unions have got to work constructively with us. So, so they're keen. That we make sure that this work is uh, focused and we take forward in relation to the capacity internally, because obviously that's something we want to grow to try and believe that this going forward that to try and minimize the use of private contractors going forward. So, yes, well, uh, I'll speak to Beryl, then and then thanks to your members. Thank you, Councillor Cody. Thank you, excuse me. Yeah, I mean, that's not always waiting, that would just seem to be a trivial question. Can you explain me how I can say for this table and uh, the blank is on the floor, what the traffic light comes with what the smash arm smash needs to get to the new key or so I was just talking about some of the people. Apologies to who you are in a much better position than I am because you've got a color copy in front of the face. <laughs> <laughs> So in terms of the, the red amber green, in terms of this is a survey which was done uh, by a lot in terms of how council were doing or film were doing in terms of the uh, the homeless uh, case loads obviously it looks at presentations, it looks at in terms of meeting them, so we've got the order of separate supply pen and legs. So obviously the organizations are councils who so for example the top line the green council and obviously in November 21 they were highlighted that they were green, we felt that they were on track in terms of being able to meet the requirements in terms of presentation was keeping that suitable accommodation order and the fact that we were getting that suitable number of supply permanent let's come through and obviously the situation has changed for for our council at the top of the list and obviously the situation went fully red so the one of the councils have been highlighting that they're under pressure the council for example uh, are kind of in view obviously where it's like line R. I think it's the, the indicator and they're on the table, for example, that they're moving to a position where they're struggling with the suitable accommodation of So they're moving towards red from the amber position that they're currently in. Hopefully that helps. It's still something to take. Yes, thanks, Tony. It helps create the, uh, one question about the, the system. Is it self assessment system against your own internal? Standards against an absolute standard. Yes, yeah, this is this is interpretations from organisations themselves in terms of how they feel the situation that is that's currently for for them. Uh, there's maybe a, a perhaps a point maybe to feedback to that in terms of some of that quality uh, control analysis in terms of well somebody saying the red but how red are they? So for example. Uh, it's Alex and Cheryl that respond to this, this survey on behalf of the, the council. So, at, at some stage in November of 21, they've indicated that uh, our position's now changed in terms of that bread, indicated in terms of our sort of order. I think that's obviously since that period, as members are aware, we've had to take on additional accommodation uh, out of the area, uh, further to the stock that we've utilised within Stirling Council Authority area for a number of years now. So, that's We've had to make inroads into now and into five, which are more then members were disappointed about. And that obviously we've recently had to take an accommodation from 
o conferir o voto padrão. Então, isto são pessoas cheias de sempre que se não não varia as oportunidades do Euro sobre o turismo da parte, são uma delícia de um tempo de pai, ou se a reflete da parte da nação de Deus, ou se dá o desejo de um freio, ou se não for a igreja. Acho que é que é mais. Well, I just a uh, question. You mentioned this briefly on the the private contractors. How do we decide to use private contractors rather than just employed by one people? And you know, what's the the thing in there, and what's the process, and why do we decide to go down that route? I think it was part of the question that was asked by uh, the sort of target. The situation we face, so sort of, and I think it's really about how fast we can quickly respond to that. The needs that are being presented to us and how quickly we can respond to that. And one number of councils, no surprise, like yesterday by the uh, council was taking a slightly different approach in terms of the void and homelessness uh, situation, uh, where they've decided to uh, delay or suspend basically anything apart from an emergency repair. Now, that would, I think that's just stoked up further problems in terms of that. This is the quickest route in terms of being able to actually get those properties absolutely worked on and repaired. And back into use for applicants to then be rehoused. We have given a commitment in the paper, and we've given them this been discussion with the trade unions to look at their overall capacity to build that in the house to make sure this situation is, is minimised and mitigated going forward in the future. So, but in terms of recruitment, in terms of our own staff, that would take some period of time to actually build up that capacity in, in the house. So, I think the, the position we've reached where it's a sort of hybrid approach in terms of. Going down and buying a contractor route, as well as looking at other capacity as the best approach. Can I ask you guys to Yes, sir. 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 Yes, you're saying it's the quickest way to deal with it, but you've had 2019 to deal with it. You've figures have been rising up for then, up 60% since that point in the number of presentations. I know the number of questions because they go directly, probably in terms of the you know, the, 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 the void properties and the turnover that was. Every man in the gains that the void properties are getting longer and longer and more than that for some time. Now, you've answered the question by saying the quickest way to deal with the problem, but is that the most sustainable way to deal with the problem? Or do you know the better? To perhaps do that just now in terms of the short term, a long or medium and longer term to actually look at maybe employing more people, taking their wealth, sharing that, that, that income and so resolving the problem in a much more sustainable way rather than put it. I know that I'm, I'm not completely against giving money to private contractors, but it's always better to give it to families and to create jobs, surely. So what, what's the tipping point and why have we not reached that? Just on your final point, apologies if that hasn't come across clear because that, that is the approach that we need to take is look at the point in terms of resource in terms of all that. And in terms of some of the discussion I had earlier, almost a skate tomorrow, there's a might be opportunities in terms of looking at the, some of the staff uh, training for capacity to deal with, with those almost property voice in a sort of different way as well. So that is definitely our approach is to look to build up the internal capacity in the medium and the long term. Yes, the, the, the approach in terms of using private contractors is definitely a, a piece of work we're doing in the, sh in the short term to get over this, this hump. In terms of uh, how it's come upon us, in terms of the, the homelessness and whatever, yeah, the presentation would be rising more over, but obviously, as you know, and I was expecting to, to fill, obviously, I was essentially out with the, the South First Impression last year, uh, which comment was still on. It's a comment, although, uh, the chief executive and the peaks obviously that's what they have a strategic overview of the service. Obviously, that's where the that came and looked at the figures where we need to take action. Yeah, so, just in conclusion, then, this is so the council's quite clear. The last council's now adopted a strategy that in the short term we're going to be increasing the allocation. I mean, I'm not going to post the paper, but we're going to increase the, the funding available for our contractors to address the problem quickly. But a long term strategy is to increase the number of employees to do it yourselves. Can you put a number on that? I, I could, as we sit here at this point, I think it would be, be unfair, it would be unfair, and it would be our union colleagues as well. We need to be part of those discussions in terms of looking at the system and the structural design of the service going forward as to, to what number we might arrive at. And apart from the other things, and obviously, as, as we're highlighting in the report in the paper, the even when our performance had sort of 
in the discussions of audit committee uh, over the last month, uh, where we've reached in terms of our void rent has been one of the best within the country. Obviously, at that stage, we still have a sort of stock of voids. So that's one of the areas we're going to have to look at because it's such, for some voids, there's only a wee bit of what may need to be done. Some of that can just be void, meter changes, etc., or spread as much power. Or for some of it's, it's requiring substantial work. So to some extent, there is a bit of a sweet spot in terms of how many voids we've got line requirement action versus the number of staff, etc. And obviously, we've got our own uh, best value obligations to meet in terms of obligations, in terms of the rent, in terms of staff and capacity whatever. So that's the whole balance that we're going to have to take it in account and look at overall as part of that process. Okay, Councillor Um, Murray, um, talking about the, the voids, talk about human gain scene as well. Um, it's not just about um, building. Um, the end to end term for voids just now is in excess of 79 days. Um, so this, I hate to use this analogy, but this quick fix would would help to bring that down and then um, if we're then bringing in new people um, that would make it easier and quicker for people who need a need a accommodation and not have to wait three and a half months and other accommodation will be um I've heard of things where children are getting getting put to stumbling because they've only got a one bedroom flat, so they're having to move move kids out of, out of the area so that they'll have somewhere to stay. Um surely it's, it's better to then and um, get these down so it's a much quicker um, mix to get these kids and their parents, obviously, in, into accommodation. And also, um, if, if there is people who don't have any accommodation to, to accommodate them as well. So, is that right? Yes. Um, yes. Yeah, I think that's right. Yeah. 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 Yeah, and, um, so, one more question tonight. Thanks very much. Uh, Councillor Tank, to the people. Thanks, Chief. The people who cite the valid reasons for bringing this to Council today and ask the Council to agree to the financial recommendations detailed with the paper. It's unfortunate that this situation wasn't foreseen sooner, but the paper outlines the background and the forward plan, the forward plan to reach a resolve. It's been a gradual increase in homelessness uh, transfer applications and new applicants since 2019. And it's believed that the increase is yet to reach its peak. Added to that, we currently have a unique position with the addition of the 60 properties at Primrose Place and the 39 off the field properties purchased recently. We also have an agreement to buy another 41 off the field purchases this financial year. And this is all in, an, in addition to the regular board turnover. I believe we currently have around 250 homeless applicants looking to be housed, many who are in temporary and unsuitable accommodation. But it's impossible to move them into permanent homes if our void throughput is delayed. So for me, this is more about people than finance. We need to get the current high number of voids back into circulation as quickly as possible to allow them to flow through the lighting process, meeting the needs of our homeless and other applicants. These are potential homes. They're not empty properties, they're empty homes. And we have applicants who are desperate to build them. As mentioned in the paper, we're not alone in this. There's a similar picture for other local authorities across Scotland. That doesn't diminish our obligation, but it highlights a national picture. I won't repeat the information contained in the paper, that speaks for itself, but I will draw attention to another area of concern. Housing support is a sanitary service, but it's more than that. It's a crucial lifeline to people in the most desperate of circumstances, and it's a preventative measure to help those who are at risk of losing their tenancy or who need structured support to sustain their tenancy and to get the help they need to enable back. This service is not currently meeting its statutory obligation, as it has no registered manager. 
An, expl an explanation for that is in the paper, as well as a tentative solution. It is expected that this issue will be resolved soon, and I'd expect to be briefed on, that, on the progress of this. I'd also ask that an update is provided to all members at the next Bill Council meeting to reassure members that the statutory obligation is again being made. Paper also mentions a breach in our unsuitable homes order. This is largely due to our size, our lack of, of suitable accommodation in court manager, and our high number of homeless presentations. The order states that we shouldn't place homeless applicants in accommodation out of the county for more than 17 consecutive days. However, we have been using accommodation in Stirling, which realistically is only a few miles away. This is a ministry of distance by comparison to council areas like Fife or Hinglands, where applicants can be placed over a vast area. So I plan to write to the Minister for Housing and call on him to review this. You'll note that the HRA is in a better financial position than that which was projected at the 2022-2024 budget, and that the finances being requested today do not exceed anything agreed in that budget. I hope the Council can support this paper today as, for me, this is less about finances and more about people and families who need homes. It's about meeting our, our obligation to offer homeless people suitable accommodation and it's about lessening the burden on our housing staff. Thanks, Chair. Thank you. Councillor Waterson. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Just, just, just to make sure that the council there's a number of things I spoke about today. I, I, I don't really think that a lot of the councillors are fully really aware of what's going on. This paper should come with, with flashing red lights on it because it's been due for some time. And I'm not I'm on the street, I'm currently saying that the convener of housing treatment can come that I've raised this concern many, many months ago to say what we were doing or what we were, what we were not doing. In terms of tackling some of these issues, there was one thing that just sits in my head. There was a bit of appointment that Councillor Ben made there. She asked about three months, but it's not so the, the, the company, just in case you're unaware of this. I had somebody come and see me at the surgery in the Roman on Friday, uh, and the first of January, right? That's not an easy day because I'm looking at the maths, right? So he'll come back and see me in the first of January the next year if someone been the It's more than that, I'm, I'm correct in saying that it's more than a year. Maybe. Uh, predominantly, people come and see me are male, they're of a certain age, and um, they find themselves in a, in a home situation, and, and, that's, and that can go on for more than a year. Now I'm at the point where what here I've been left, and I'm following it because some people, some people come up and constant phone calls, texts, and that's because the type of stuff we can do is kind of stuff that move this thing forward. There's not nothing, there's not any of this unless we look at this whole problem in terms of because it's interesting because. It's asking for money and it's saying we're going to have a review during the summer and all the rest of the report. It's already offered some solutions, which are kind of sensible ones like reading their mind. We need to get the house to turn over quicker because that's contributing to the problem. Um, and then we need also, we, we need to, you know, get more staff back, back for the post because we're lacking the capacity to deal with the problems here. I'll give you an example. I was just talking on the street months ago. That's been on for months. That used to be empty. And that does not require a great deal of work. We need to start looking at and imagine approaches towards if, if there's no real um, health and safety issues in terms of avoid properties, is it possible to provide a, a, a really comprehensive grant system where people can come in and purchase and undertake repairs and things themselves? We need to start thinking imagine because if you have the house at the top of Mass Street, for instance, a month or month, month or month, after month, um, it's, it's just kind of symbolic to what the problem is, and, and, and that's happening all over the place. The grass is also up five foot, by the way, and I find it kind of cheeky. You're very good to people and remind them of the responsibilities of parents when we don't observe their own responsibilities as a landlord. I've got to live there, and I've got to see that getting higher and higher every day. Everybody says, We're going to do some more cut the grass. We're going to do some more cut the grass. We're going to do some more cut the grass. You've got to tell this, and it brings me to the whole point here with standards. We are contributing to the problem that we've created. The problem we've got just now in terms of numbers we've got. We contributed to that. Our behaviour is not contributing to that. You would like to, I, I, I know for a fact that of all the counsel from the table here today, a lot of them would be horrified at some of the things that we are doing now. 
I put my key to phone. Right? But, but nevertheless, the dean of never came to cancer. These issues that will be discussed in cancer. Inhumane, what I'm able to take, inhumane factions towards families and people, individuals, we talk about people. If people are important to us, we didn't just talk the talk and walk in. We need a real review of policy. We need to start taking people differently. We need to think about the impact of your decisions, of your behaviors of having the problems that we've got in terms of homelessness, in terms of the number of occupants that are coming towards us, and the reasons why they're presenting. If we want to solve the issue of this, it's not going to be an answer to throw money at creating the house of people who are homeless. We have to actually address the problems of homelessness. And we have to look at the reason behind the being relationship breakdowns, a bit of part in that process, which we need to as well when we're, when we're breaking up families. And house and homes that have occupied a century and they know what you know this, but I've said this to dogs, we you know my opinion on it. And there's been a change in our approach, but it's not the approach that I recognise has been this council. I'm not comfortable with it. I think the council should be made aware of it. I don't think there have been many councillors that need to be support some of the approaches that we have taken on the back of the legislation. And I uh, don't criticise Murray Price, I'm an excellent officer. I really like him when he's done it. He made the gas with him, guys, and the back to him, he's diligent in this work. But there's a response to something that's given him. The question is asked, and we all to our team. Well, it's not just about legislation. It's not required for us to do it. They can't force us to do it. We make a choice. The, the choice is they learn or not they want to change it, they really want to evict families for these reasons, but they want to evict individuals for crimes that come up the town that are not completely non tenancy like it matters. But that's the bit how, how they want to do a business. It doesn't help when you're evicting somebody. You've got a lot of bad guys in the world, a lot of bad women as well. If you start evicting the one, they're going to need to lift. And then they're going to come back as it does again. It's, it's, it's madness. And then as, as Walson says, We've got a duty to accept that we've made them homeless, but they've made themselves homeless by their actions. But we've used the legislation in such a way that we've now contributed to that. Does it help anybody? They've already been convicted, they're going to, they're going to face time for it. And what do we do? We throw them the noose. Not because they're getting jailed for six months, but because we've got something to try to shoot me a gun. But it's not helping anybody. And arguably, it's not helping the tenants where they've been evicted from, because and a lot of the times, it's going to say look at the local vicinity. So you can do something out of the consent of being convicted because you're not doing my policies. It doesn't make sense. So it's all of these things. So this is a really, really important paper. And the thing I brought it in, you just say, well, this is an update. It's never an update. It's a uh, private report. And I, I really will look forward to the review and what it's going to look at, but we're going to have to look at all these forms. And, and as I say, I want to get to the final point again. We have to look at our own behaviours and how we're approaching these issues. And I just hope that councillors are going to have enough information to do because they should know about this stuff. They should be told about these important changes in legislation. They should be told about the important changes that we adopt in terms of practice towards eviction and whatever. At a point in time, we've sort of strongly introduced legislation to prevent eviction. Your evictions have went up. I'm going to say that confidently just now because I've never heard of this happening before, this state of eviction. So that's concerning. You know, at a time when we recognise people under lots of pressures, we are under pressures. People are under pressures themselves, and what we're doing is to make the problem worse with the practices that we've got. I just think we need to think about it. And I think we need to find a political approval for it, because I'm not always sure that the response to some of the changes in legislation are representative of what we're doing in the state of the state we're supposed to be considering or so. That's my point. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. 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 Unless you have been amended by the next reason the papers and purpose to be able to do that. So I think this is a thing, it's not a piece of the thing to try to get out of some of the people's impacts. Any others that want to contribute to the debate? Councillor Kerr. Councillor Kerr. Yes, thanks. Councillor Kerr. Thank you. Um, and how can you possibly object to the the, the people that are asking the the more money? It's a bit of a thing to we know the self for the On the face of it, the simple get property in a level livable conditions, better multiply, get rent on it. Easy, no problem. But if it becomes the problem, you must not only look at the, the level of white properties and how you tackle them, but we need to create a deeper dungeon to establish the reasons as to why there are so many. That's the touch on it again. Other reasons for this socio-economic 
as it goes to the it goes to the different places, you have to go through it. How many people are going to leave the properties and cause the problems out of their control? Because the numerous, but surely for every problem, there must be a solution. In Malaysia, we have a fairly robust tape recovery policy and a threat of housing change. But we can't get to the root of the problem. The efforts of this team and policy will be no more effective than a second plaster in a broken neck. Thank you. Thank you, members. Thank you, Thanks, Chair. Um, just to say that I can't, can't and heart disagree with the sentiments um, Councillor Holton, and I'd specifically invite Councillor Holton to attend performance meetings because I think his experience in this will be valuable. Thanks, Chair. Okay, thank you. Um, you can see on the front page of the paper a whole series of issues that the crimes to note along with a couple of decisions we can take. Um, I know the films will take it themselves. We don't have to do it in the year this day. The last thing that we can recall is 73,000 from last year's HRA. The capital came down to the hands of the office of the person who's been approved and the chief executive and many of the council financial regulations. To note that the work and volumes may be ordered to the HRA of the new border lines for 13 to the fourth. No engagement to private transactions will be done in the Congress of the Council of the Trade Union Human Process. To note that the agreement to trade union colleagues and proposals containing the film and the human to the world area. Note the constitution of the Fire for Tenants and Residents Association. And note the review of the Indian Service of Strategic Response to the homeless groups which will take place during the summer recess and the members of the Human Health Service Companies. The two which were announced to approve about the increase in late family private contracting budget for 970,000 with the revenue of 23 to the board to deal with the current back of the voice and to approve the additional territory of the lack of staff requests to detail in the report from the board 422 to 426. I'm happy to approve the paper. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Item six, financial um, regulations. For a pension week. Yeah, sorry, uh, Chair. Just to jump in, um, Councillor McTaggart was talking there about obviously updating council office and um, other councillors on on um, what's going on in, in meetings and papers and things like that. Can I just ask the council to uh, double check the uh, emailing groups because it came to light on Tuesday that on the licensing committee, um, some councillors that are on the committee weren't included on the mailing groups, so weren't getting vital information. And I just want to ensure that all councillors are getting access to the same information so they can all come to their own conclusions fully informed. So just to bring that to the council's uh, attention. That's the report follows an annual review, annual review, and update national regulations since they were last updated in June 2019. Financial governance is a key priority for the Council, and financial regulations focus on the main principles that underpin sound financial governance. These regulations previously were placed in June 2019 have been reviewed and updated to reflect current processes and procedures. A number of small changes have been made throughout the document to provide clarity in certain areas. In particular, areas relating to the purchase order process have been updated to provide clarity on the ordering and payment for work services in sections 11 and 12. The deadlines for procuring and submitting the draft annual accounts and the audit accounts have also been updated in line with strategy guidelines as it set out in section six. It's intended that these regulations are reviewed on a regular basis and revised as a first place. Council is asked to approve the updated financial regulations and have to state the information. Thank you. Okay, thanks to the British Chair for that updated again as well as if you have all been received of that. It was just a small point on paragraph 3.3. 3. 
Uh, it states that uh, changes will be submitted about housing rent and council tax no later than the date required in order that the changes can be effective from 1st of April uh, and the 11th of March. Uh, I it just seemed a bit woolly to say the date required and I was wondering if it would be possible to give more of an indication when that date would be. Yeah. yeah, so in terms of the housing and in terms of tax, there is a date that um, each year that we have to set by, and that can change. So these regulations just allow the, the data to share the regulations that are um, submitted for that year. Okay, thank you. Yes, thank you. Very simple. Um, so I made statement, first of all, I found that the addition of the appendix made the process of the duty treatment. And I hope the question is, is this a practice that would be replicated throughout this department and others because it makes such a difference? That's definitely something you can take before you throw any flash papers. I'm sure the commissioner seems to be able to do that. Other questions? There's a whole list of questions, but if we're getting for a bit, I just discovered I'll share into a terms of claim. There's another amazing addition to the paper that you talked about. The appendix, 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 that's you happy to move in the paper as long as it says it's um, in the angle of um, of the financial regulations. I think it's only right that we do this regularly. And um, on the point of the question of the appendix, the spokesperson of finance um, gets some papers for come forward and when I looked at them I was like, well I don't know what's changed here and I particularly asked for um, the, the track changes to be circulated to everybody because you know, it, it's impossible to know what they've changed in the they're, they're, they're small so um, I was happy to see them around and I'm glad that it made um, everybody's jobs a bit easier and I would certainly say that we move forward we definitely need to have um, track changes on um, if they can um, um, review and update on these sorts of issues. So, yeah, happy to move you back. Thank you. Thanks for the second. I've been happy to move you back. Thank you. Thank you. So I think I'm seven and just the to our policies, just for the next one, please. Thank you, Jimmy. Thank you so much. Uh, the paper as presented asks Council to approve the updated maximum of the England's subcommon and over and under payments policies in the situation stable. HR the Regulatory Government to continue as part of the following programme which will review and update the Council's policies and procedures related to HR, health and safety, organisation of the development to be payable. In order to ensure collaborative and functional working with the Council's policy group, which comprises their TU colleagues, management and HR, would regularly move to jointly review and to agree new really and updated policies and procedures. The policies as presented today were fully and robustly discussed and agreed to the most recent policy agreement to be settled on the 23rd of May. And in addition, at the tripartite meeting held on the 14th of June, the policy is to table for discussion and it was noted that it would be presented at Council for formal approval. The three policies and procedures tend to the couple of people and the party can touch questions at the council meeting. Thanks, Chris. No new questions. Um, thanks, Chair. Um, just a, a, a question about what sort of training and review. Uh, policies are going to be in place for managers, uh, any peer training or, or supports, because return to work um, 
can be dependent and impacted or influenced by good or bad management management bias or poor handling of individual uh, cases. So I'm just wondering how we're going to get a level of parity about that and if there's any review process that will you know, deep dive into individual cases to try and you know, enhance and, and level the experience if possible. Uh, thanks, Councillor. Um, as the Council, we do want to uh, maximise attendance, capability, et cetera, getting them as part of a corporate training. So all the managers are asked to attend that and sign up for that. Each case of absence is supported by a business partner that the manager has access to in terms of basic guidance. We also have occupational health uh, uh, ER, ER and employee assistance programs as well that support that uh, attendance program. OK, thank you. Any, any other questions? Yes, yeah, so I think that there are no questions that probably um, to the, 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 you know, the discussions that we had previously and um, for those of us who have had to it, the weeks ago we were able to the game in that floor and so we could see the policies coming on the board and hopefully they will be able to get some things. Can you give some sort of Yeah, I'm happy with what we said and acknowledge that these policies will be kept under review. They can only take things like the increase in working from home. And uh, I'm happy to be set on the three policy views. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so that the only extensive discussion will take place between the rules and management and the information development the policies to note that Chad Bartek on the 14th of June discussed the policies and the information and the information and the information which is what we've been asking in case we had that particular paper. It's a mate, it's a well-being hub, not physics. Uh, good morning, Kevin Solis and Karina. Uh, I'm pleased to present this paper which provides an update on the project which is requested by Council, we have a lead by Council, as provided that each Council needs um, given a significant scale and interest on this project. The report, the, uh, the report provides an update on the following. The appointment of Hubby Central Scotland Limited to develop a design and build project for a new well-being hub and walking school. This appointment allows us to progress the project from Viva Stage 1, preparation of briefings, Viva Stage 2, concept design, and allows us to progress the supply chain selection for the design team and the Tier 1 main contractor. A draft project brief has been completed, which includes the specific vision, the strategic outcomes and detailed objectives of the project. The project brief has been used as part of the application plan for the supply chain selection process. The appointments of the mechanical and engineering and civil structural contractors and final main contractor will all be confirmed within the coming months and all be concluded by the 5th of September. And this will allow us to move to the next stage of concept design, which is as it truly will be as a very exciting part of the project. The report also provides an update on the communication strategy. Project team members and wider school and leisure staff have been attending the local community galas. Bets of Fundies to raise awareness of the Wellbeing Hub and Local School projects. This will continue through the summer. We've also created a suite of social media channels launched yesterday, starting with Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And they'll be expanding to include YouTube and TikTok as the audience is built. And I would encourage you to come and look at these and have to share the handles with you. Finally, the paper provides an update on the P5 Swim program. Between April and June 2023, all 590 primary five children from our 19 schools, including all these schools, have now received five weeks of water safety and aquatic skills training at Dollar Academy or the Peak, which I truly agree with an end to the summer is a critical life skill for these young people to have. The feedback from the schools and pupils has been extremely positive, and a more formal review and report will follow. Plans are already in place uh, and taking shape for the programme in 2023 24 academic year. I would just like to finish by thanking Council for your ongoing support and shared ambition for the Wellbeing Hub. And again, it will be, be truly transformational for the people of Clamour I'm joined by Alison Mackie, Team Leader for Wellbeing Hub Project, and we're happy to take any questions.
Thank you, Lord. Do you have any questions? Thanks for coming. Thank you, Peter. Session number one. On 3.6, Peter, what is the composition of the project board? Thanks for the question. Um, for the mixture, we have obviously the two strategic directors that are project sponsors from Lockby School and the Wembley Hub with representations from Health and um, Sports Scotland as strategic partners, the project manager and the sale as senior manager. So we also have the legal and finance as well. Sorry. So are there, is there anyone from the council or one the people? No. Is that is that okay or not? Normally, in terms of the project board, this year we wouldn't have representations from elected members of the council. However, we do keep the spokesperson um, for for education and support that department fully up to date and all progress of the project. I don't think they have that. Okay, next one on the uh, page one twenty one. Uh, I think I'm going to be honest with you, but it's the intervention that he could not have. Um, and that gets kind of what it comes to these programs and how they're handling stuff in the community. Is that one? I'll double check that one. That's probably a typo. It's uh, the um, Dollar Academy and the Peak for the Programs and Dollars. Oh, well, apologies. Yeah, well, first of all, um, the hat, so I misinterpreted the question. Yes, they put the Hydro Pool at Dollar Academy. So we're using that, we, we also use that for young people to steer complex needs and, and a range of others, and we're looking to expand that with some That's a great thing. One last one. Um, yeah, it's the new list that media, page 132315.1. I tried last night to, to make it not clear that I had to be able to run all three of them. And actually, only got an answer on Twitter. Only has a primary mention of the word on Twitter. Is that in some of the or is it a theory of the Yeah, that isn't right. I just did a search on the plan and share with everybody. No, double check the search. Sorry, you can double check the search functions. Um, certainly, the Facebook page and the Instagram were also live. I think it's WBH and Loggies. It's a short hand, which is because of the link. I don't know. No, <laughs> it's, like, it's, it's the link, but you should be able to check where we have and the school should take you to the Facebook page. That's, that's the cool name. But we'll share the actual uh, handles with you so we can directly link to find them. But we'll check and try to find out why the search engines aren't allowing you to go directly to the pages. And you can see that point of I'm a simple type manager person, thinking of a simple way of going onto the new platforms. I'm not thinking, uh, thinking like WBH and stuff like that. But it's a good way to remind the man in the street that I think that the government's not this as he could. Thank you very much. No, I think, I think it's a really valid point. We have had numerous challenges trying to work out that Twitter and, and uh, social media handle when you've got Wilking Hub and Lobby School. It's a long, long title. Um, but we're also really conscious that we don't want Lockheed School to be missed off in this as well, because um, it's a key development as well, and it's a critical development for our manager. <laughs> so we felt that what we're we'll trying to do is to say, is we've made it as, as usable as possible. The main thing is we're going to be sharing it far and wide through our existing networks as well, social media networks. Um, as you see, we've been doing galleries and sort of kind of down to the public, and we've also got a QR code that will take you directly to the information. So we're just trying to feed that out as much as we possibly can. Um, but I do agree it's, uh, it's a challenging handle um, for social media, but uh, we have messing with it. We don't want to do much more. Thanks, Robbie. Kirsten Forsen. Yeah, I think um, it's probably following a bit from Dennis's question about the, the programming in there. And I appreciate that um, there's, there's a role for elected members in, in these sorts of things. Maybe the programme board isn't um, that. But I'm quite keen. We're, we're getting the, the updates because we've been um, given undertaken to provide regular updates. When are we actually going to start to see something tangible coming forward about? The, the facilities that will be provided in there because elected members don't really have what to have or say or I would imagine what's going to be 
um, provided there. Um, so when, when will we start to see you know, those sorts of things coming forward? Um, I guess I'm, I'm asking will elected members um, be able to kind of have their say in these sorts of things? Because I wouldn't like things to progress to a certain point and actually it's not something that, that council would want. Yeah, thank you for the question. Um, what's the next stage we're moving to in the concept design phase for the critical point? Because that's when we start to work with the architects and design team, work with factors to look at how do we turn this into a physical building, what will it look like, how will it integrate across the Lockheed's building department with the space around it. So throughout that concept design phase, we'll be um, at lot, many different points where we'll be able to connect with council to share those, get input from our key elected members. And assure them that, you, that as a council, you're comfortable with whatever we decide to do before that design is locked down and um, meets the needs and meets the vision for, for the council. Thank you, Commissioner I'm also going to ask for the Twitter handle, but I have managed to find that and on Facebook, so I'm upset. Thank you very much. We have a very basic question. Um, when inflation is so low on the 80%, and we consider that this is a ceiling on the eventual cost of the other building in the budget, we need to get to a smooth here for the depression that just getting rises exponentially. Yeah, thanks for the question. Yeah, absolutely. You know, that's part of the next three stages as you work through quality as a building with the structural. And the plans, and then we'll, we'll, we'll eventually come back with final costs, and it will be a, a, a final cost which will be in a period of affordability cap for the project, and that's what the T1 contractors will have to deliver against. That will be brought back to council, and, and we are and ensuring that there's, in terms of the capital costs that we have at the moment, we're mitigating those risks if we move forward, that we're ensuring we're being quite aggressive with pricing and what we're putting out to the designers, the architects, the contractors. Um, and ensure we've got some resources in the case there's, there's any stuff which is done. That. But the final cost will be brought to council, and that will be the full of the cap at the end of next year. Any other questions, Councillor? Can I just clarify on that a little bit? So, um, so when, you, when you get to that stage, it doesn't matter how, how high the um, it's not going to be very high, it's locked in that, and, and the contractors will know that. Yeah, with any project on this, that you know, that affordability cap would be what we'd be working to. If there is any changes or any um, significant costs rising beyond that, that would need to be discussed and brought back to the council. And it would either be a change to the facilities mix or a change um, or, or an uplift in cost, but that would be mitigated through some of the costs that we've already afforded. So the affordability cap of any project that we brought to council on that would be where we'd be working to. But as you say, the last few years have shown us that things can change. We would have a decision to make this council whether or not we can have to change the design or not. We would still sit in the time that affordability cap. Okay. Yeah, actually, some of the stuff that I was going to say has actually already been covered, so I'm not going to go over it again. But I think it's exciting we're moving on to the next phase. And the fact that we've appointed Hope Co, we've already agreed to the optimal facilities mix. Now is the time where we start to really plan and go Hub Co. The architects will, will eventually bring on board to make sure that that optical optimal facility mix is is um, is delivered for us. Um, I believe that we have already had quite a number of um, architects, both nationally and internationally, very interested in this already. So I'm really excited to see where, where this is going to take us and what we're what we're going to deliver. And um, I did have a point about the the, um, the social media. Then I slight you, I'm not a social media person, but I found it on Twitter, like the only social media platform I you do is Twitter, and I managed to find it. Actually, I have no idea about the other ones to be perfectly frank, but feel that there's a different demographic there. So she's clearly uh, managed to find that. Yeah, I, I would also like to emphasize that the point that we made about the primary five um, pupils, we made a commitment that we would have all primary five pupils who were swimming in um, lessons and aquatic. 
So we're looking for skills training, and we've done that. You know, and I'd like to thank our partners at Dollar Academy and Peak and you know, our own internal team, Sport and Leisure, and the PE departments in the primary schools as well. That's been fantastic. So, yeah, I'm happy to be with the Thank you, Councillor Lindsay. Yeah, thanks, Camina. And uh, I really just reinforce all of the comments that have been made, but, but happy to reinforce them because I think it is important to, to reinforce the, the progress that's continuing to be made. We've we made that commitment to bring back an update at the, at the council meeting, so that's been maintained first and foremost. Um, yeah, the point that I have to is that we want to step forward to progress to, to the next stage in terms of that legal process. As Ellen's highlighted, you know, the next stage is really, really exciting, really, really important, though. In terms of that, what that facilities mix looks like, we know it's an optimal facilities mix, but we're now getting into the specifics of what does that actually mean, what does that look like, and, and what's critical to that is the, the amount of consultation that's been done to this point. But I think we've reinforced in the previous meetings that perhaps this may be one of the most consulted uh, projects, and it needs to be because it's one of the biggest projects that we've, we've ever embarked on. But it is. It continues to be one of the most consulted on the projects, but that doesn't mean you know we take that off the gas. But there's been really good uh, consultation recently at the um, galas and other. Uh, uh, to be honest, everywhere I turn up at the minute, I'm seeing uh, staff uh, present consulting with with the public. So um, it is just about raising that profile, though, and I think it is about how we bring this to life now because people can see something tangible, as as Ellen's highlighted. Um, how did it continue to bring this to life? We're starting to see visuals now. Um, you know, I know we're a wee bit away from the breaking ground, but certainly in terms of actually bringing it in digital to life, um, I think that's that's critical. Because I still think um, the public out there probably still wouldn't quite realise where this, where this place is and how connected it is, is going to be um, to our existing infrastructure. So, and the last thing is just about the swimming list. I don't think, again, you can. Um, you know, understate that. And um, was listening to Duncan Scott yesterday, who's been a big push um, around swimming licences. And, and we are, despite the fact we don't have our own pool at the minute, we're not working with partners on that, and we're working that trend. So we're going to have a facility that actually will hopefully be able to pay for itself. Many swimming pools out there can't, and that's why we're seeing many swimming pools um, you know, under a lot of pressure and will be closed. But, but, but we're working that trend, and we're working that trend in terms of providing more safety to all what was it, 590 people. And that's that's a huge undertaking again, logistically as well. So I'm really well done to, to the staff for Robbie coming in straight away and just making that happen uh, with colleagues has been fantastic. So um, yeah, I think we're on a really good trajectory with this, and it's a really exciting. So happy to say it. Okay, thank you. The paper's open. It's open to the yeah, I just want to echo a lot of what's been said here um, already. It's a good paper. I personally would like to see things move along a little bit quicker because I think it's really important that um, the public can, can see that, that steps are being taken to, to you know, move, move the project on. But I completely understand the, the process. We're, we're bound by timelines and guidance and everything else. Um, but we need to be pushing forward on this. And I think the next stages are going to be really, really important. Ensuring that we've listened to people um, who've contributed to the consultations. Like you know, I mean, everywhere I've noticed now, you've got um, our support and measure staff out engaging with the public at gala days, at events, at, at, you know, I um, miss them. And I think it's 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 something to be held up actually, um, because most of these things are at night or, or weekends and they're going above and beyond. So, a huge thanks to them for, for everything they're putting on there. But it's our job to kind of, um, you know, kind of keep the focus on, on what we want to achieve and um, you know, to keep on pushing to get results as quickly as possible. So looking forward to um, the further updates where we can start to get something a bit more tangible because right now it's, it seems to be a wee bit up there. Um, and I think once people actually start to get uh, an idea of, um, of, of what, what they can expect over the coming years, um, we might start to get a wee bit more momentum and positive public um, views around it. Um, one thing I will um, um, highlight is the QR code. I thought it was absolutely great. I was at a, a volunteers event and one of our um, kind of officers was there and you literally just, you know, take a photo of it on your phone and it takes you to do to all the information. Absolutely brilliant. And actually, if I could hand that out to every single person who asks me about the wellbeing hub, I've actually took photocopies of it just to do that. Um, so I'd encourage everybody to, you know, 
get that QR code in and start passing it around to people um, because it is it's quite exciting and as Graham said we're bucking the trend in club manager and, and delivering this um, facility. So yeah, good things. Okay, thank you, Councillor Coy. Thank you, Mr. Yes, it's a good paper, and picking up with a nice one with a QR code, it might make it rather attractive to tattoo somewhere. It's gone. Um, it's gone. Um, it's gone. Um, it's gone. Um, it's gone. I think uh, I think an important thing to mention in my mind is what everything is going on is doing really well. There's been a lot of emotion around this topic over the last couple of years, and I think it's really, really important is to manage the expectations of the public. And I think that's where they could be. the communication outwards has to start to flow now, so that they are not imagining this and making that better than they imagine that and doing this. So if you manage what they're expecting by looking at the wrong as much as you can through the process, you know, it's, it's a little different. We find it's not always an area, it's a little bit more we can say, but if we keep them up to the end and target their um, expectations, we'll have a lot of that and ready to think that we create the real progress. Okay, thank you. Any other contributions to the debate? Okay, so this one has to move. And uh, we're going to be doing the program. Same thing has been already run through by all the others and the smallest amount of time. So, again, we can take the cruise Okay, last but not least, um, lots of policy. I think it is. It's, is it this one? <laughs> yeah, good morning, Chair and good to be members. I'm very pleased to be able to bring to Council a new Dogs of the Royal Secret Plan Management Council. Scotland is the first country in the world to introduce a national Dogs of the Programme back in 2011, empowering individuals, families, and communities to reverse and repeat their dose and prevent the fate of their overdoses. As we're all keeping aware, drug related deaths will be devastating impact on individuals, families, and the wider community. Remoxone is a medicine that can temporarily reverse the effect of opiates if somebody overdoses. Opiates include drugs like heroin and methadone, which were implicated in 89% of drug related deaths in Scotland in 2020. The administration of Naloxone provides time for emergency services to arrive and for further treatment to be given. Naloxone can be administered either as a nasal spray or more commonly as an injection from a container similar to a pen that can be used in cases of severe allergic reaction. Naloxone has been approved for use in overdose situations by professionals and members of the public in Scotland for many years. Due to COVID pandemic, there was support, there's been support from the Lord Advocate to expand the number of services able to distribute naloxone to anyone who may be supporting someone at risk of or likely to witness an opiate-related overdose, including non-special services on the general public. The Scottish Government has set out the commitment to extend the Lord Advocate's guidance to ensure that these changes remain in place and, if possible, new legislation is introduced at a UK level to make them permanent. We want everyone who is affected by drug use to be able to access the walk zone, and this has been encouraged by major national campaigns. But Lancashire Council does not currently have a corporate policy around the walk zone. In light of this, our lead officers from the Clark Manishire and Stirling Malcolm Over Drug Partnership and the Clark Manishire and Community Justice Partnership sought approval of the Council Leadership Group to develop a notes on policy in Clark Manishire Council, taking account of the legislative changes in relation to the work zone since 2020. And here, they'll be here to answer questions as well. In developing this Council policy, consultations take place with staff. The working settings where we may encounter people in overdose situations in order to raise awareness and address concerns in relation to the introduction of an all-zone policy. The response to the questions raised by staff are reflected in the frequently asked questions which are appended in the policy. 
It's important to state that the uptake of training and subsequent carrying and using the locksaw is voluntary. There's no obligation on employees to do so. The policy sets out details of available training for staff, which can be accessed free of charge and takes less than an hour. In addition, supplies of the locksaw can be provided by NHS both bank at no cost. The policy only applies to employees acting in the course of their duties who have undertaken the appropriate treatment. The policy proposes the introduction of an Aloxon champion to be appointed within each service area who will have responsibility for ensuring that records of Aloxon training and supply are also kept up to date. In addition, there will be a stable record to be kept through the Council's Health and Safety Workforce Development Women's Services. This Naloxone policy forms part of wider joint working that's been taking place between the Clark Manshire and Stirling Alcohol and Drug Partnership and the Clark Manshire Community Justice Partnership over the past 18 months to light policies that promote harm reduction interventions, reduce drug deaths, and address stigma and discrimination based by people with substance use issues in any situation. It will allow council staff who volunteer to access training and be equipped to administer a potentially life-saving intervention should they encounter a suspected opiate overdose. So we recommend to Council that approve the, approve the Plant Manager Council Naloxone policy to support training and safe administration of Naloxone by employees who volunteer to do so. And myself, along with Michelle and Simon, we developed the policy and we'll be happy to answer any questions that we have. Thank you. Do you have any questions? Here's the coin. Thank you. Um, Chad, with the FAQs are pretty comprehensive and helpful, but I just wonder um, are there any known side effects at all of the lobs? Experts who have involved in the details of answering that question, thanks, Mr. Point. Um, essentially, no, there's no need to say to fix in as much as, um, you know, as we've said in the FAQs, um, if no also is administered in a case where um, his, the person has not experienced any great overdose, um, it simply will have no effect. Um, so, I guess the, the only effect is that the, when it is administered, it can. Um, for someone to come kind of become conscious again quite quickly. But other than that, I'm not, um, not aware of any side effects. But... No, me neither. It's, it's a registered medicine. And so we went through extensive clinical trials. Also, if you were to administer a blocks on somebody who was unconscious for another reason, they wouldn't have experienced any adverse effects either. So it's, it's safe from that perspective. Any, any other questions? Sorry, Councilman. Thanks, Chair. Um, just a couple. I was just wondering what, first of all, what the current level of, of interest has been, sort of up front and formally, from staff. There's been a good level of interest and a lot of enthusiasm from staff. We spoke to staff within housing and also also within justice services. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of enthusiasm to, to have access. Um, as we've said, obviously, it would be um, a voluntary uptake um, of the policy, but um, there is certainly enthusiasm to have the training and have the ability to use naloxone and to have a, a policy in place that provides the kind of reassurance around that as well in terms of the kind of parameters around that. Yeah, so my, my second question was sort of around the, the parameters. If someone volunteers, uh, is trained effectively and situations arise, if they're doing loan working, for example, and a situation arises where this medicine would need to be administered, but it wasn't necessarily safe for our member of staff to do so, uh, given the environment, the surroundings, other members of public, how are, are our staff protected in that instance? Um, because there's obviously there'll be legalities around that as well. And um, certainly we've um, discussed extensively um, the, the implications of the policy with legal services who have no concerns about that. Um, essentially, 
and the law so is, is available to be used by members of the public. So um, essentially, what this policy kind of stuff within the own duties is 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 a safe job to be using. Um, so and, and certainly in terms of the kind of legal implications, we are satisfied and legal services are satisfied that the policy covers uh, any concerns that there might be in terms of staff and their building. So, um, so, in, so in, in terms of the working aspect, if, if an employee was uh, in a situation with someone that they were, well, they didn't feel safe to begin with, they would apply the working policy, uh, which is a, a, a council-wide policy that's part of our risk assessment. But also, what we're also saying to staff is that we dial 999 and ask for an ambulance um, if they feel that someone is at risk of any harm. That they, they, they wouldn't be saying we have to go and you know, administer the, the naloxone if they didn't feel that the situation was in a safe, they weren't in a safe situation to do that, um, they would dial 999 and ask for assistance. Okay, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Thank you. Thank you. This is maybe calling to be in. Uh, yes, so also is uh, responsible in cases of opioid overdose as well. Uh, opioids generally, uh, we talk about opioids and opiates. Opioids are synthetic um, chemicals such as fentanyl. I should say as well, just for counsellors' reassurance, that we have not seen widespread take up of fentanyl in this country as we have in the United States. It's something we're watching as well. Certainly, we're, we're fortunate that we're not in a position where we're seeing it sort of translating to drug death statistics, mm -hmm. which we're really fortunate for. It's something we keep a vigilance about, as you can imagine. But yeah, it, this uh, will also be really support that as well. Thank you. Okay, Thanks, Jane. Um, I'm just wondering a bit, I, I can't do this uh, under the uh, question and answer part, where it states that a um, person who is opioid, opioid dependent could go into withdrawal after the administered the um, Naloxone. Does the training take account uh, how to deal with that if you find somebody in severe withdrawal? Because I mean, it can be quite a harrowing experience for the for most parties involved. And I understand you would call 999, but if there was then um, you know a, a delay in the ambulance arriving, does the training include that? Thanks. <laughs> Um, the training does account for that as well. So the mechanism that um, the law also works with is that a person, um, if it is an opioid and is an overdose, that they would resume consciousness, hopefully with the right level of, um, of uh, application. And then afterwards, as it says, they may uh, enter a withdrawal state. As you say, that can be quite upsetting for people and quite difficult for them to manage. The training does address this. The intention in any any situation where somebody might be using naloxone would be that you would also have sought um, uh, ambulance support as well. Partly because ambulances in Scotland all have naloxone themselves, but they also have a greater volume. So, for example, I have a long cartridge here. It contains three applicable doses. And if somebody needs to require more and you've called for an ambulance, then you would have both people to support in any kind of withdrawal situation. And then we also see a, a referral would be made now through our near fatal overdose team, uh, which we now have uh, active across Fourth Valley. So that would tie in also to special support that would be available for people as well. Yeah. Thanks. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. Just very quickly, is uh, this approach uh, being adopted to our standard first aid uh, training that the council staff are undertaking? Mm -hmm. uh, this because this one is a voluntary, um, so employees be signed up voluntarily, they don't have to sign up 
to this particular tree line because the first aid uh, is uh, you know, the designated first aiders and they go through the tree line. But Simon was saying part of the tree line has a first aid element attached to it, you know, in terms of recovery positions and you know, you know, not getting the person up and getting moving about, etc. So there is the tree line does have a first aid element to it, but in terms of the council the first aid tree line, this because this is totally voluntary for the people at stake. Just 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 as well, guys. But um we we have had discussions around the joint up with the first aid training and current first aiders. So we have had discussions around that. Um, it may be the case that not all first aid training folk will want to do this, but certainly we are looking at how we kind of record the training and and uh, who is trained the administrative and officers within the council and how we can kind of hold that information alongside the register for speeder training. So we're looking to join all of that up to Any other questions? That's a very good question about the training and the percentage of the good personal of mine. Does it have to be like we've done the training so often? So we offer sorry, we offer refresher training um, through the McCarson group. Um, that in the past has been facilitated through peer delivery to the sort of people who are members of the Fort Valley Recovery Community. Um, and our intention is not to offer that on an ongoing basis. The online training, um, I think it's updated. Uh, well, the, the cartridges themselves have a, an expiring date uh, after usually two or three years. Um, one of the things we're going to be looking at as part of the development of the Lobson policy with the ADP, you know, the Alcohol and Partnership, is a way of how we can make sure that training is, that, that training is offered um, as a refresher for people as they go on to other. But there's not a, I don't believe there's like a kind of set time period for the training to be refreshed. Thank you. Okay, no further questions. Council Hamilton, to move the paper, thank you very much. Thanks, maybe now. My weapon is policy being brought forward to council. We should be proud as a country that Scotland was the first to adopt a national naloxone program for empowering people and communities to save the lives of someone experiencing the real overdose. This policy would award a senior leadership team, vaccine filler and alcohol and drug partnership, manage our community justice partnership and consultation staff is built on this allowing the greater to uptake of naloxone amongst public and municipal services. The policy sets it clearly that there is no requirement that the eligible staff take up the training to the minister. But if they wish, and the point that we want the training to feel comfortable to do so, the support and training that will be provided is clearly evidence. And the responsibility and organisation of roles within the council clearly set out. I'm happy to propose this paper. Thank you. Councillor Wilson, what is it? Thanks, Chair. I'm happy to sit in this paper and to thank the partnership and the officers for bringing this paper forward. And as is already been highlighted, it's uh, on a voluntary basis. At a personal level, I'd like to see this sort of type of training be adopted into standard first aid training with the uh, draw the higher profession and bring the paper to the council. Thank you. 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 Yeah, I mean, welcome to Beaver and the policy. I think it's a sad thing that we need this um, looking to sort of team and, and for staff, but um, we have to be realistic and it can save lives. I'm actually really like to hear it, um, and I wonder if it's something that should be brought, brought forward maybe to the Alliance and um, just to kind of get some awareness with. Because I'm aware that we work with a lot of partners, particularly in the drug sector, etc. We might not um, you know, kind of be aware of, of such policies, and if there's anything we can do to help you know, roll that out across the wider sector, I think um, that is something that we need to consider. So um, maybe add that onto the agenda for the future meeting. Thank you. Uh, just in response to what Councillor Lee just was mentioned, the Bell Farmers have also adopted their own lots of policy, but the statutory part about this like police and fire and so on. But I think it's some of the smaller organisations that make me under the umbrella of the sector and maybe help. Thank you. Councillor Button. Just for me, it's a new green and a green mist. I'm and so to get this kind of policy forward. So it, it's good to see, you know, I can only help. 
even if it says one line to get the Thanks, Chair. But just on the back of it, please, we did just say that I'm wondering if it might be worthwhile um, allowing the um, small community groups to link into the council trainer because um, obviously they would have to find that find the funds to access training like this, so it, it just might be worthwhile to include them. So I think the comments are negative. I'm going to see the last one. Thank you for the vision. Any others? Thanks for having us. We're going to ask the truth. We're going to ask the council to support the training. We'll see the best are we happy to have you? Yeah. Yes. Well, I'm glad that the pigs are going to develop. I'm going to finish in the swarms with them. The other ones are the teams, but that's another one. We're working on the ones that are starting to be involved in the report. We've got a case of one that said, we've got an opportunity to save some of the other ones. Some of them are safe, but it's important to make that case. You'll all be obviously Sitting as a member of the emails that we sent out, the boys are going to be taking bullets and the school day council is going to be having them. It's quite ironic that the person wants to be doing it because other people are once things off the prison. That's not, that's not an image. It doesn't even manage to get a break for some of these things. Some of them don't want to aim them. One of the girls in the video is that Steve Kim's got in the last month. Thank you very much. Thank you.